UCLA prevents students from enrolling in free speech course. Conservative UCLA professor Keith Fink has been fighting for months against efforts by his new department chair to arbitrarily limit the number of students who may enroll in his popular free speech in the workplace course. Despite having previously taught in a 292-seat lecture hall, Fink has seen his enrollment cap slashed repeatedly at one point to just 150 students, though it has seen has since been raised back to 200 following a public outcry. Department Chair Kerry Johnson claims the restrictions are designed to ensure high quality of instruction, but Fink and his TA say the concern is unfounded, calling it a pretext for limiting access to the course. University of California Los Angeles students packed a 210-seat lecture hall late Wednesday afternoon to hear popular communications professor Keith Fink speak for nearly three hours. Fink's Communication Studies M172 Free Speech in the Workplace course is in such high demand that some students are sitting in the aisles. Many of the students are already enrolled, but others are stuck on a waiting list, and an alarming number are holding out hope of receiving a permission to enroll, a PTE number despite a crackdown on that practice by the new department chair. Historically, Fink has been a popular lecturer at UCLA and has given out PTE numbers to students every year so long as the space in the lecture, lecture hall permitted. In the past, Fink was allowed to use the lecture hall, meaning that he was able to accommodate 292 students, but is now fighting efforts by department chair Kerry Johnson to slash the size of his classroom and prevent him from issuing PTE numbers. The capacity for enrollment for Communication Studies M172 in spring 2016 is estimated to have been 225 seats for communication students and 25 seats for labor and workplace studies students, adding up to a total capacity of 250, though it is impossible to verify that figure because the department has curiously closed the enrollment information for the recent course. Even though the previous enrollment estimates are only educated guesses and could be wrong, Litt strongly asserted that the total capacity was at least 225. The removal of the spring 2016 capacity information conveniently makes it impossible for Fink and Lit to reference the former large capacities that Johnson has slashed, although the department claims that the disappearance of the former 2016 spring cap is an error. Fink and Lit repeatedly sent Johnson emails providing various unused classrooms that could accommodate the prior capacity in high demand for the course. Finally, on February 21st, the very night that Fink went on Tucker Carlson tonight to speak about the situation, Johnson moved the class to one of the suggested classrooms, albeit the smallest one on the list, upping the seating capacity to 210, which is still smaller than last year's enrollment capacity of 225. Fink's class was not observed by Johnson until March 1st after the changes had already been made, appearing to contradict her promise not just to adjust the enrollment cap until completing her review. The controversy also coincides with an excellence review, evaluating Fink's performance in previous years based on student feedback, which could theoretically be used to justify ending his contract. According to Lit, the department kicked off the excellence review by asking for his CV, a personal statement on teaching, a list of up to 20 student names to be solicited, and a list of names of individuals who may not be able to provide objective evaluations. Curiously, Faculty member Greg Bryant, who serves as a vice chair of the Department of Communication Studies, was selected to evaluate the class on March 8 despite being on the list of individuals who might be biased against Fink and predictably produced a less than satisfactory evaluation. Johnson, however, told Campus Reform that the discussion surrounding the enrollment cap is merely intended to ensure that the quality of instruction does not suffer from the overload of students and even went so far as to emphatically deny that the cap had been reduced. Mr. Fink's class has not been reduced in size this quarter and has remained stable at 200 for several years, she declared. In addition to the UCLA's responsibility to our instructors, we are equally committed to ensuring high quality of education to our students. <laughs> Departments must maintain a proper and manageable balance between the number of students enrolled on a course and the teaching staff that serve that student body. Fink and Litt, on the other hand, insist that Johnson's justification is just a pretext, and that they have never expressed concerns regarding their ability to handle the larger number of students that they have been lobbying for. Kerry is now relying on student-to-TA ratio as a pretextual argument to not increase his class size. Her argument is bellied by two critical points. First, she keeps emphasizing the burden, the size it places on me. There is no burden. If you look at the students' reviews of me last quarter, it's obvious to me that TAing for Professor Fink and his class is effective. Fink and Litt say that they are continuing to appeal their case to the administration, but have not received any indication that the impasse is headed towards a satisfactory resolution. There are, however, several larger classrooms currently sitting unused 
during the 5 o'clock to 7.50 p.m. Wednesday time slot that Fink's uh, course occupies as evidenced by images taken during Fink's class. This could potentially be an attack on free speech. However, they're usually so quick to, to accuse people of hate speech and then use that as their justification for trying to shut them up that perhaps it's not. However, there's so many inconsistencies about her level of reasoning that it does seem to look like she's trying to keep this this classroom really small. At the same time, I feel like the, the headline of the article wasn't entirely accurate, mostly because they're not trying to stifle free speech. They're just small, you know, making the classes smaller. That seems completely different to me, but I just wanted to share that with you guys because we do have to read between the lines sometimes. And as a uh, moderately wise man once told me, he said, there's always three truths. There's one person's truth, the other person's truth, and the real truth that lies somewhere in between. <laughs>